Good evening, good evening, good evening. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to our midweek gospel explosion, pastoral teachings. And certainly we thank God for you joining us on tonight. We do honor God who is sovereign and supreme to his son, Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, and to the Holy Ghost, who is our leader, teacher, comforter, and our guide. He who leads us in the way of all truth and righteousness. We greet each of you in your respective places with Jesus' joy and certainly in divine love. Well, tonight we'd like to call your attention to the book of Genesis. That's the first book in our Bible, Genesis chapter 39. And we'll begin reading at verse number one. Genesis 39 and verse one. You will find these words recorded if you're there or when you get there. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this preaching and teaching moment. We pray now, God, that you release your power, your presence, your anointing upon this, your vessel, that I may preach and teach with power and with clarity. Anoint each of us the more. Anoint our ears, hearts, minds, and our spirits, that we might believe, receive, explore, apply, and share this word. In advance, we give you all the honor, all of the glory, and all of the praise. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray, and every heart said, Amen. From those uh, two verses of Genesis chapter 39, verse 1 and 2, uh, tonight, we are going to speak from these words, <clears throat> positioning for prosperity, positioning for prosperity. Positioning means to put or arrange someone or something in a particular place or way. Prosperity. We hear about it all the time, especially in Christendom. Prosperity simply means successful, prosperous, profitability. So as we look back over our lives, many times we perhaps notice that we weren't as successful or we weren't as prosperous as we think that we should have been. So tonight, I want to encourage us and want to educate us actually on how to position ourselves for prosperity. Because many times we may, may have missed our successful, our prosperous situation, our blessings because we were not in the right position. And tonight, hopefully you understand how to get in the right position with the right posture in order to receive prosperity or receive the blessings that God has released uh, unto you. Now, think with me for a moment. Think about this for a moment and imagine yourself in the scene of this Egyptian market in our text. Chapter 39 of Genesis, verse 1 and 2. If you were among the many curious spe spectators and bystanders in the main square, would you consider this man, in our text, would you consider this man Joseph, who is about to be sold to slavery, would you consider him as being a prosperous man. He was on the auction block being sold into slavery. Would you really consider him 
as being a prosperous man? Probably not. However, the Bible teaches us that Joseph was a prosperous man. In the eyesight of God, our father, although, jo uh, although Joseph is on the auction block to be sold as a slave, he is considered by God as being a prosperous man. Now, when God calls you prosperous, and you're going to be prosperous, regardless of what comes your way, you're going to be prosperous. And you got to understand that as his children, as God's children, we are to be prosperous, successful. Listen, <clears throat> the first thing I want us to remember, if we're going to position ourselves for prosperity, we need to remember, here it is, prosperity is a result of who you have. Did you get that? You see, God's definition of prosperity is contrary to the world's definition. You see, corporate America measures prosperity based on what you have done, what you have accomplished, and what you have accumulated. Are you with me? It is based on entirely on you focusing all your time, energy, and resources in meriting titles and collecting accomplishments. Uh-huh. Now, we have witnessed in this nation, we have witnessed how this self-indulgent accumulation has led to the sublime crisis. The dissemination of investment banks and widespread international financial meltdown. We have witnessed that in our nation in the last few years. Are you hearing me? My brothers and my sisters, I want to encourage you to begin to see that the world's model of prosperity is unstable and built upon a foundation that is shakable. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It may have the outward appearance of the good life, but it is temporal and can dissipate like smoke and easily slip away like the shifting sands upon a seashore. Are you hearing me tonight? From our text, in verse 2, it is clear that prosperity is not what you have, but who you have. Did you get that? Let's look at verse 2. Genesis chapter 39, verse 2. Listen to what it says. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. Mm -hmm. You see, Joseph literally had nothing materially. But at the same time, he had everything. Why? Because God was with him. Mm -hmm. The material things that you have accumulated, my brothers and sisters are, 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 are trying to, to, to gather together. Those things do not make you successful or prosperous. Are you hearing me? It is the presence of God, our Father, in our lives that makes us prosperous. Uh-huh. And we need to stop pursuing things, pursuing things, and start pursuing him, God. 
Mm -hmm. Now, Joseph. Joseph was in a seemingly bad place, wouldn't you think? He's a slave. He had nothing. He had no bank accounts, no educational qualifications, no natural connections with people of influence. Joseph had nothing. Now, hear me well. That gives all of us hope. Realizing that from a material standpoint or materialistical standpoint, Joseph had nothing. But the text says in verse two that the Lord was with Joseph. Uh huh. You see that? And he was a prosperous man. Wow. We can start believing today in the power of of the presence of God in our lives. Start looking to the Lord, God our Father, and claim the promise in the scripture for yourself. Listen, put your name in the text. In verse 2, the A clause, when it says, and the Lord was with, put your name there. Your Lord was with Leland, and he was a prosperous man. Put your name where Joseph's name is. Mm -hmm. Read this aloud to yourself. Read it a hundred times if you need to, and begin to see this in your reality. Take it a step further. S attach or stick this promise on your mirror, in your bathroom or wherever you, you, you look in the mirror or on your refrigerator. And because he is with you, because God is with you, you are already prosperous. May not look like it, may not feel like it, may not seem like it. But if God is with you, you are already prosperous. So, if we're going to position ourselves for prosperity, then the first thing we need to remember that prosperity is a result of who you have, not who you are. Are you with me? The second thing I want you to remember, if you're going to position yourself for prosperity, is remember this, that saving and blessing you is God's responsibility. Wow. Yeah. Let's go to the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1. Remember, saving and blessing you is God's responsibility. It is God's part of God's job description. Matthew chapter 1, and let's uh, focus on, uh, let's look at uh, verse 19 through 21. And you've heard this because it's talking about uh, the Christ child uh, being born as it was recorded by Matthew. Verse 21 of Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to read it a little fast because there's a few verses. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with <clears throat> virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Verse 24. Then Joseph being raised from sleep and did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him and took unto him his wife. Verse 25. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and he called, Joseph called his name Jesus. Okay. 
Wow. Now, we have heard that many times uh, during the Christmas season. I've preached from that text many times as well. So, but I want you to see and understand that if we are going to position ourselves for prosperity, then we must remember and know that saving and blessing us is God's responsibility. Uh-huh. Every time you call the name Jesus, which means Yahweh is our savior, you are calling God himself to save you. Are you hearing me? That's important. Whatever the challenge or circumstance, whatever crisis you are in, physically, financially, or emotionally, you can call on the name of Jesus the Christ and Almighty God himself will save you. Wow. He that calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. He will save you. God will save you from your sins and then from your challenges. Wow. That's good news, isn't it? Remember, if you're going to position yourself for prosperity, is that saving and blessing you is not your own responsibility. It's God's responsibility. You see, my brothers and sisters, God can be all powerful in your life. But watch this. But if you are not confident that he is interested in your prosperity, his power would mean nothing to you. You don't believe that he is interested in you being prosperous, that he cares about you being prosperous, then his power will mean nothing to you if you don't have any faith that God cares about your prosperity. Are you hearing me? Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, is our Savior. You know that? As Christians, we should know that. Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, is our Savior. Now, let me ask this question. What is Tiger Woods famous for? Everybody will say golf. What is LeBron James famous for? You probably will say basketball. What is Willie Mays or, or Barry Bonds famous for? You probably will, will say baseball. Well, let me ask you this. What is Jesus the Christ famous for? Can you answer that? Well, I answered it for you. Saving you. Did Jesus not say I came to save the lost? So let's go back to Matthew chapter one. And let's look at verse number 22 through 23. We're going to read that again because I want you to get this. Listen what it says. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophets, saying, Be holy virgin shall <clears throat> be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, or Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Now, what does it mean? to say God with us? Good question. Glad you ask. Listen, when the Lord is with you and me, you and I become prosperous in every endeavor in our lives. If he's with us. When the Lord was with the children of Israel in the Old Testament, when the Lord was with the children of Israel in battle, they were never defeated and every military campaign ended in overwhelming success. In other words, they prospered in their military campaigns or their military battles. Are you hearing me? So now let's go back to Genesis in the chapter 39 and let's look at verse number two 
of our text. I'm sorry, verse number two of, of chapter 39 of, of our text. Listen to what it says. And, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Mm. My brothers and sisters, because of whose you are, you can start practicing his presence by speaking it out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. The text says in verse 2 that the Lord was with Joseph. That's why Joseph was a prosperous man because the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. So you can, if, if God is your daddy, if God is your father, you can begin now to speak that out into the atmosphere that, that I am a prosperous person. So, remember, <clears throat> if you're going to position yourself for prosperity, you must remember that prosperity is a result of who you have, not who you are. Secondly, saving, excuse me, saving and blessing you is God's responsibility. Now, the third point I want you to get tonight, if we're going to position ourselves for prosperity. Remember, to practice his presence and see his power. Practice his presence. He is with you. If you are his child, he is with you. So begin to practice his presence and see his power. Now hear me well. My brothers and my sisters, the best time to thank God for his presence is when we don't feel his presence. Did you get that? Let me rewind that. The best time to thank God for his presence is when we don't feel his presence. Don't go by your feelings. No, because feelings can be deceptive. I know in the old church, when I grew up, they always talked about, you know, to be being saved or religion and, and, and how that, but they, they said what they knew that it's a feeling. Well, we, of course, we know salvation uh, uh, by Jesus Christ and by God is more than a feeling. So don't go on your feelings. You got to get beyond your feelings because sometimes you're going to feel like you're saved. And guess what? Sometimes you gonna feel like you're not saved. So don't go by your feelings. God don't want you going by your feelings. Go by his promises that he is Emmanuel, God with us. You go by the truth, and the truth is God promised, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So remember now, if you're going to position yourself for prosperity, remember to practice his presence, God's presence, and see his power. Because he said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. Remember that feelings aren't based on the truth. Remember that feelings are not based on the feelings are not based on the truth. God, God's word is truth. Whatever role or vocation you are in, whether you are a school teacher, a business leader, preacher, teacher, or homemaker, I want you to know tonight that God our Father is with you and he wants to make you prosperous. He wants to make you a success. That's shout music right there. Mm -hmm. My brothers and sisters, his grace, his unmerited favor, his divine love is for you. Don't let the devil fool you. 
The Lord Emmanuel is with you. He's with you and he's with me. You see, it is not about us. It is about God. And if God is with us, guess what? He will give us prosperity in all that we do and cause us to have good results in every area of our lives to the glory of God. Are you hearing me? Listen, if God did it for Joseph, a young man sold into slavery, if he did it for Joseph, he can do it for you and me. Yes, he can. So let this be your reality. The Lord is with me. Mm -hmm. And you put your name there. And I am a prosperous person. You see, my brothers and my sisters, as you become conscious of how God is with you, you'll see him leading you to prosperity in all that you do. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. You see, when you depend on yourself, you carry all of the stress, burdens, and anxieties in your circumstances. And if you depend is on God for every success in your life, the Bible records a beautiful promise. But if you depend on yourself, you carry all of the burdens, all of the stress and anxieties that your circumstance may present you. But the Bible says, teaches us, if your dependence is on God for every success in your life, the Bible records a beautiful promise for you. What is that? This is what the Bible says. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. It's just like that. Mm -hmm. You see, my brothers and sisters, so often we run to the wrong source when we are trying to be successful or trying to be profitable or trying to be prosperous. We run to the wrong source. But hear me well. When God our Father is your source of prosperity. There is no stress. And God's peace will guard your heart and your mind. Remember now, as I said earlier, and I probably said it twice, well, so I'm going to say it three times. Remember now, if you are in charge or you depend on yourself, you carry all of the stress, all of the anxieties, and all of the burdens. But if you depend on God for every success in your life, then God promised to bless you. 
That's when God is your source. And when God is your source of prosperity, there is no stress. There is no anxiety. There is no burden. Because he can handle that. He used to sing a song in the old church. Take your burdens to the Lord. And leave them there. Listen my brothers and my sisters. The circumstances around us. May appear bleak. The circumstance around you individually. May appear to be bleak. Your bank account may have dried up. Your home may be in foreclosure. Your friends may have disappointed you or forsaken you. Maybe you have received a devastating um, medical report. And it caused you to be frustrated and disappointed. That is the time, or now is the time, to turn away from yourself. Are you hearing me? And look to Jesus the Christ, who is the author and finisher of your faith. Jesus Christ is the middle person or the middle personality of the triune God. God the Father God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And if God did it for Joseph, mm -hmm, he will do the same thing for you. My brothers and sisters, Joseph was known as a prosperous man not because of Joseph's intelligence, his IQ, any of that. He was called a prosperous man even in the midst of slavery because God was with him. Now you got to know you can't be a straddle the fence with this one. You got to know whether or not God is with you. The word of God teaches us that if we abide in him and his word abide in us, we can even ask what we will and it shall be done unto us. So you got to know whether or not God is with you. You got to allow him to be with you, be in you and lead you. That's how you position yourself for prosperity. Knowing that prosperity is a result of who you have, who is living your life for you or through you. You got to remember that saving and blessing you is God's responsibility. You got to remember, you got to remember that you are to practice his presence and see his power. Yes, my brothers and sisters, it's all, it's all about us being in the right position. And many of us, even in Christendom, are out of position. So we cannot be prosperous. We cannot be successful. Because God is not our shepherd. The psalmist says the Lord is, present tense, my shepherd. And because he is my shepherd, not he was or will be, because he is my shepherd, I shall not want for anything. That means that I'm in the right position for prosperity because God is my shepherd. So as a child of God, as children of God, as the church, we have someone 
in our lives that can do everything and anything but lie and fail. But in order for us to receive success and prosperity and profitability in the kingdom of God, then we must be in the right position with the right posture. Because I believe that although we've gone through some tough times in the last few years, although the church has been ostracized, criticized, and ridiculed, although that has happened and people have walked away from the presence of the Lord, I still believe that God is positioning us, those of us who didn't throw in the towel, those of us who didn't give up, those of us who kept our faith. I believe that God is positioning us for abundance of blessings, positioning us for prosperity. And when I think about it, I can decree and declare that our best days are ahead of us. Our best days are in the womb of time, not in the tomb of time. But it's up to you. If you want to position yourself for prosperity, then it's up to you. You can't be your own boss. You can't be or you can't say that you are in control of your life. Because if you are in control of your life, that means that you've let God out. You left God out. God has to be first. He has to be first place or no place. So, I want to encourage you tonight to get in the right position so God, God's blessings can be activated into your life. You know the story of Joseph. Joseph was blessed by God and he became a prosperous man, although he had to go through some tough times in your life. The old saying is, when the going get tough, tough people get going. Not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. We are children of God. And there's nothing too tough, too hard, too difficult for God to handle. So make sure that you position yourself for God's prosperity. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you now for this, this day. We thank you for allowing us this privilege and this opportunity to come together. We thank you, God, for the, your word on tonight as re, it reminds us of how to position ourselves for prosperity, how to allow you to, to become the leader of our lives. We pray now, God, that you let this word tonight sink deeply into our hearts, minds, and our spirits, that we'll become better, better Christians, better disciples, better ambassadors of yours, as we carry out the assignment that you have given unto us individually and collectively. We pray now, God, that you will give us uh, strength, give us your power, your presence as we go forth. We thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you are doing. And we will thank you the more for what you are going to do in us, with us, and through us. We thank you, Father, that you have called us in a time as this to be your mouthpieces to be your hands, your feet. We thank you and we ask that you continue to strengthen us as we continue 
to go forth. We pray for the church. We pray for the body of Christ. We pray for those who perhaps are suffering from a malady, a sickness, or a disease, or suffering from some type of difficulties. We pray, God, that they would remember that you are still on the throne and you are still the answer for the world today. Father, we even pray for our national and international leaders that they would allow your love to dictate the things that they do and the things that they say and that they would humble themselves, pray, return, and seek your face and turn from the wicked ways so we can heal from heaven. You will bless our land, forgive our sins. We pray, Father, for the local leaders, those who have authority over the systems of the world, that they would make a 180 degree turn and turn back to you, who is the author and finisher of their faith, who is the God of this the, a God who can do anything but fail. We pray for the church that we will continue to do what you have called us to do. Pray for those who are backslidden, those who don't even know Jesus Christ as their personal savior. We pray that they will make a decision on tonight. The backslider will come back and the ones who don't know Jesus Christ will accept him as Lord and savior on tonight. While you still have time, while your life still lasts. Now, if you're watching or listening on tonight and you are not saved, we pray that uh, you would make a decision tonight because that is the beginning of uh, you being a child of God. You are a creation of God, but to be a child of God, according to the word of God, you have to accept what he did through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. So if you have never received the gift of salvation, we pray that you would do that on tonight. Pray this prayer with me, if you will. Lord God, I'm a sinner. I need to be saved. Come into my heart and make me a new creature, a new creation. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. He died for my sins and you raised him for my redemption. I receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. According to the word of God, that means that you are saved. So what I want you to do is to make sure that you connect with a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching church so you can grow in what you have confessed and what you have believed. And if you need our church for anything, please call us. That's the Innovation Baptist Church. You can call us at 850-575-0818 or you can log on to our website, innovationbaptistchurch.org, and someone will help you along the way. Well, my brothers and sisters, thank you for sharing your time with us on tonight. If you need a replay of this message, you can log on to our church's website and you can get the replay and you can share it with someone else that you think may need this message, positioning for prosperity. Until Sunday morning, we're back in the sanctuary. You can join us there or you can join us by Facebook Live Sunday morning at 930.